Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the people show. Checking the Pulse Rescue Nation brought to you by X Cancer. Check them out at xcancer.com. Today I'm joined by Husker great, Husker legend, Mr. Grant Wistrom. How you doing, my friend? Good, Adam. How's it going, man? Dude, I'm glorious. We haven't talked in a couple years, so I'm super excited for this interview, and I appreciate you taking the time. You bet, brother. Glad to be on. So this first question, I wanted to look back quickly before we go forward. I've been doing that in a lot of my interviews lately. Um, But obviously you were a teammate of Scott. You spent a lot of time with him. You got to know him really well. I promise this is not a loaded question. It might sound like it. I'm just genuinely curious your thoughts, okay? Um, Obviously everyone wanted Scott to work out. Uh, It it did not. Uh, What is your feeling or what is your impression as to why the Scott Frost era didn't go a little bit better than it did? You know, uh... I just, man, I'm not going to bash anybody, but I just feel that, you know, when we, when the last staff was brought in, it was, it was sold that they were going to get back to Nebraska football, you know, not worried about how many stars a kid has associated with them. We just wanted guys in there that wanted to play football and play for the university. And I don't feel that happened. Yeah. You know, I feel that they went for the splashy, you know, the splashy signees, the guys they had to pay money to, and the guys they got were guys that as soon as they didn't get to play, things didn't go their way, they're unhappy, all those guys jump ship. And yeah. that is no way to build a program, having to re-recruit your team every year. So I think that's probably the biggest place where they failed in not getting guys that wanted to play for the university and then they wanted to play for themselves. Yeah. No, I agree, and I appreciate your thoughts on that. So now I want to quickly move forward. Matt Rule, he's the guy, you know, guiding Nebraska football going forward. What are your initial thoughts, your impressions on new head coach Matt Rule? You know, I don't have a lot of uh, knowledge of Matt, you know. from But, he, you know, he came in. They've been, they had a short opportunity to recruit. You know, it looks like they did a heck of a job recruiting. Um, and actually, I coached a guy last year that you know, they're talking to now, and he's liking what they have to say. So, you know, from everything that I've seen, it's all positive, and just, you know, hopefully we can continue the momentum. You may have already answered this, but I'm going to ask this next question anyways. What, in your opinion, is the single biggest thing? Like, what pops into your mind Initially, the biggest thing Nebraska needs to do to immediately improve going forward. Line play. I, <laughs> I had a feeling. It's up front, man. <laughs> I had a feeling you that was going. You know where that was going. Yeah. So that, that leads me. On defense, we haven't had a consistent pass rusher in a while. I mean, I'm a big fan of Garrett Nelson, some of the other guys who've come through here. I mean, Garrett was an all-Big Ten performer a year ago. He's going to try his hand in the NFL. Love the guy. But what do you feel Nebraska can do as a team? Okay, how do we get a more consistent pass rush as a defense, as a unit, as a team, and get more guys to stand out individually as well, getting after the quarterback? I think you need guys that have the mindset that Garrett had. You know, Garrett is a guy that could have lined up and played with you. He could have played with Jason and I, 100%. And that's why Garrett was successful. And that's why those guys, when Garrett was on the field, that he brought up the level of play around him. So you just got to get hard-nosed, tough guys that want to go out there and kick somebody's ass. You know, it's not about just making a tackle. It's, I'm going to line up, I'm going to put my hand on the ground, and I'm going to hit you in the mouth on every freaking snap. And I'm going to break you down, and I'm going to make you quit. And until we get guys with that mentality, you know, we're not going to be a tough team. We're not going to be a team that's going to get after people. You just got to recruit tough guys. And I feel like once again, you know, if you're a tough guy, you're not playing for yourself. Chances are, if you're a tough guy, you're a hardworking person that's got grit, and they're going to play for the man next to you and not for yourself. I agree with that. Now, there we got a new D coordinator, okay, Tony White from Syracuse, and he has come out and said, he was asked about the black shirts, how he's going to handle them. He said he wants to learn a little bit more about it. Okay, but what are your thoughts on how and when the black shirts should be handed out? Man, uh, you know, I don't know if it's, if it's, you hand them out as a unit. 
I think if you've got a guy, and you know, we talked about him earlier, a guy like Garrett Nelson, that you don't question how he's going to show up every day of practice and on every Saturday. And that he's playing for the man next to him and not himself. That's a black shirt. And it doesn't have to be a whole unit thing. If you've only got three guys out there demonstrating that mentality, give them to those three guys and make the other eight guys earn it. Don't just give it to them just because they're on the starting defense. That doesn't mean you're a black shirt. A black shirt is a person that has the mentality to go out there and work every day. Now, I'm curious. What was your reaction, okay, when Mickey Joseph announced the black shirts weren't coming back last year? Okay, what was your reaction at that point in time? But then part two of this question, some people at that time even mentioned it might be time to let go of the black shirt tradition. What are your thoughts on that if that were to ever happen? Uh, that'd be a really stupid thing to do. That would be a really incredibly dumb thing. To do. I mean, that's a, a trademark of Nebraska football. I mean, you don't give up traditions. I mean, traditions are the standard. You know, if you're not upholding tradition, then don't hand them out. But just because there's not anybody worthy there at the time doesn't mean you get rid of the tradition or the standards. I, I completely agree with what you just said. When I saw that even being thrown out there, for me personally, uh, when Mickey said that, I was kind of stunned. But with everything that was going on with that season, I was fine with it. It was such, everything was so crazy. I was like, that's fine. Okay, one less thing to have drama over for now. But when people, and it was only a couple people I saw, started mentioning maybe we should shelve it. Or maybe shelve it for a couple years. I was like, God, I couldn't possibly disagree anymore. So I'm glad you right. and I are on the same page. Uh, I don't know what you know about the three three five defense. You played in a lot of four three defenses. Obviously, you played a lot of football in your life. But what are your thoughts on the three three five defense that Tony White and the Huskers plan on running going forward? Uh, I have only ever played in a four three, so like this is it's beyond me. And I'll be honest, I only know what I did in a four three. I couldn't even tell you what the rest of the guys were doing out there. <laughs> So, like, this is gonna, it's going to be fun for me to watch and learn and, and, and figure out how it works. When you think of the three three five defense, and I, and I know you're kind of learning about it the same way that I am to a degree, um, and I've learned a lot about Tony White's three three five defense, and I, he actually he'll put a fourth guy on the line of scrimmage sometimes, the versatility, things of that nature, get more speed on the field. But just, I'm just curious your thoughts. When you initially hear about three three five defense, does your mind initially go to – versatility of the de what the defense can do or does it maybe go to hmm, maybe two smaller guys on the field as a whole like where does your mind kind of go initially you know I, I kind of go to the versatility um you know you never probably in that defense you're going to be bringing guys from different places so you know you're never going to know where the blitz is coming from or your rushers are coming from um but, you know, that would probably be the first thing that I think about. And being able to move guys around a little bit more, play guys in different positions. Uh, like you said, it just gives you a lot more flexibility, I think, as to where you're playing your best players. All right, man, I got to ask you this question. Uh, Deion Sanders was my favorite NFL player growing up because he was the complete opposite of me. We couldn't have been more different as far as how we played the game. And I love that. He's the coach at CU. All right, what are your thoughts, and I'm going to be following this all year because I'm just intrigued by Deion Sanders as a general whole. I always have been ever since I was a kid. What are your thoughts on him being the coach at CU? And I don't know if you've seen some of the videos they're putting out, but what are your thoughts on his approach to how he's initially starting to coach his football team? You know, it kind of caught me off guard, but, man, if you've got a bunch of bad apples in there, you know, and they're not your guys, and I – and I you know, and it's probably akin to the same things that we faced here. Guys that are playing for themselves and not for the university. I mean, if I walked into a situation like that, yeah, I would come in swinging an axe. You know, I'm like, hey, this is how it's going to be. There's a new sheriff in town. If you don't like it, guys, there's a transfer portal. Feel free to use it. I gotcha. And I, I saw, and I made a mental note of this. I knew at some point I'd try to have you on the show. But I saw an article last football season. I just looked it up again, so I had to ask you. All right, your your daughter, Charlie Wistrom, all right, an accomplished club soccer player. I believe she's a sophomore. Correct me if I'm wrong. But you had texted her 
about how far can you kick a football. Like, essentially, she ended up being the kicker for her high school football team. Extra points, onside kicks, field goals. Like, what prompted you to send that text? And what does she think? What does she think of doing that last football season? You know. We, we needed a kicker, and uh, I know she kicked the football, and Charlie's yeah. asked me if she could play football ever since she was five years old, and I was always, no, no, no. Okay. And uh, and so, you know, at a position of kicker, I knew we, she could be somewhat protected there, so I just, you know, texted her and wanted to see what her thoughts were, and she jumped at the opportunity, and honestly, it could not have gone better. I mean, the, the, the guys on the team supported her. Uh, you know, when she, you know, when she was down, they picked her up. They celebrated all of her wins. So they were phenomenal. And, and what's crazy is they played uh, for the state championship in soccer last year. And she travels all over the country playing soccer. And we don't draw a big crowd to our high school football games at our school. But the crowd that she played at in Friday, you know, in Friday nights had more energy and more excitement and were bigger than any crowd she ever played in front of. So... You know, she got to experience that, which she just found, you know, just amazing. Uh, I was so excited for her to get to participate in that. It, all in all, man, it was an awesome experience for her. That's awesome. So maybe the, you've already answered this question, but does she plan on doing it again next year? You know, next year is, it's, I'm learning so much about women's sports and, and soccer. Your junior year is pretty much your break, make it or break it year for women's soccer. Okay. So she's really going to focus on soccer next year. She wants, you know, her dream is to play Division One soccer somewhere. So um, she's going to, you know, f- focus all of her attention on that. Hopefully she can get something locked up after her junior year, and I think she'd like to come back and try it again her senior year if the opportunity presents itself. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully that works out, and good luck in her pursuit of the playing co- collegiate soccer. I'll keep my eye out on that. i got to get your quick thoughts on this, you know. Because uh, this wasn't around when I played, it wasn't around when you played, and it's completely changed the game. What are your thoughts on is, is the transfer portal and NIL? Do you think that they're good for college football? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, um, you know, you're essentially you're becoming you know you're a paid athlete now, and I don't know what I would have done if I'd have had a lot more money in the bank account as a college student. I don't know what kind of human being I would have been. Um, I don't know if I'd have had, you know, the same drive to get to the NFL that I did. So, you know, that hurts. I think the portal, you know, as a coach having to re-recruit your team every year, I get letting guys transfer, but I mean, you look at the stats in the portal and I could be wrong. And I'm sure you're more well-versed on this than me, but about half the guys that enter the portal don't end up anywhere. Yeah. It's over half. You know, it, yeah. And so it's like, man, where, and then you've got guys every year changing schools. And so, you know, I get it. It's not fair to make a kid to force them to stay at a school, but at the same time, I, I got to think there's a different way to do both of it. NIL, you know, that's not a sustainable model. Um, in the portal, I, I just think it's really hamstringing college football. All right, last question I got for you. I'm going to put you on the spot. It's the big heavy hitting question. What's Nebraska's record going to be next year? All right, don't be mad at me. How many games are we playing? Uh, 12. Well, hopefully 12. 14, if not more, but at least 12. Yeah, at least 12. I Man, I'd love to, and I don't even know, so obviously you can tell how much I've even seen the schedule, so it's just a shot in the dark, but it'd be pretty cool to go do better than 8-4 and four next year, man. Okay, all right, I like that. We are playing CU and Dion. Do we get the win in Boulder next year? Oh, most definitely. That's going to be, I hope I can make that game. That'll be a fun one. All right, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for joining me. As always, Adam, thanks for having me. Until next time, Husker Nation, go Big Red. And always remember, throw them bones.